Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to look at creating tables in SQL Server and how to insert into them once they are created. We are going to look at how to insert one row into that table and how to insert more than one row. We're going to look at how to add a primary key to a table, how to drop a primary key from a table. We're going to look at adding columns to a table and then how to remove columns from a table and how to add an auto incrementing ID. So we are going to go through the whole thing here. There shouldn't really be any questions once we've finished. But on my site, which I'll provide the link below, I've got a link to this tutorial where everything's run through step by step. It's really simple to do. And it's worth taking a look at if you can. But to start this, we're going to create a database. And we'll call it table insert. Call it that. Doesn't have to have a fancy name. Um, so over on the left hand side, we should see table inserts been created. If I expand that, we'll see there's no tables. Now, simple syntax for creating a table will be create table and then we declare the name of the table. So we'll call it TBL employee. Do an open bracket, we'll do a closed bracket and the columns that we want to add. So, first name, we're gonna set a varchar. And a varchar is a string, essentially. Um, and what size we want that to be. A person's first name isn't gonna be longer than 32 characters, so I think 32 characters is sufficient. We'll do middle name. Do varchar32. Copy that. Do your last name. And we'll do the age. And we'll do an integer. Now an integer is a whole number. Unless you're five, no one really cares about whether you're 30 and a half years old. So an integer is gonna be a whole number. So for an age, it's ideal. So let's run that. Where we want to run that, change that to TBO insert. We'll run that. Now, if we look over here, refresh this, we should have TBO employees been created. Columns, these are all our columns. Now, the question is how do we insert into that? To do that, we use the insert into syntax, we specify the name of the table that we want to insert into, I'm going to say table employee, and what columns do we want to insert into? We're going to insert into the first name column, we're going to insert into the last name column, and we'll do the age. Now, all this, as you'll see, is in brackets, Got the brackets here, the brackets at the end, and then the values that we want to put into there. Now once again, this is going to be in brackets. The first value is going to be assigned to this, the second value to this, the third value to this. So let's do, let's do Homer Simpson. Homer, the last name is going to be Simpson. And the age, don't know how old Homer is, should we say 42. So into there one row so we can select from there and we can see we've inserted into that table now it's important we specify what we're inserting into here because as you can see we've got four columns and we're only inserting three values so if i remove this and try to insert into the table SQL Server with error because it's not sure what values it needs to assign where. And if we also assigned middle name here, we'd also error because we're specifying four columns but only saying we want it to go into three, so it'd also error. It's quite clear actually, there are a few columns in the insert statement that are in the value statement. Okay, so another common question is how to insert more than one row into a table. 
So to do that, we can we can keep the top value as is. So I'll separate these out. We do a comma, and we just let's get rid of these because this will fail. And we could do bar Marge, she can be 32. Bart's about eight, isn't he? Uh, and that's how we insert multiple rows into the table. So we can see we've got two rows in there. So in total now we should have three. That's how, that's how you insert multiple rows into a table in SQL Server. Now, as I said, this is only a quick way to create a table. You might create a table like this if you just wanted to list say like a fewer than 100 rows, or potentially an audit table that's just gonna have lots and lots of inserts. But for an employee table, it's not what we want because you might have more than one person called Homer Simpson that starts at the company and you've got no way of knowing which value refers to which employee. So to do that, we need to set the table up correctly. We need to add ID columns, we need to add primary, t primary key columns and we need that to be auto-incrementing. So let's run through how we do that. To do that, I'm going to take the same syntax. We'll start down here. We'll call it create table correctly. Let's drop the table for a minute so we can start again. So we shouldn't see any tables in and out. Nice. So at the top, we're gonna to call, we have an ID column. That can be our employee ID column. It's gonna be an integer. Now this is where it gets interesting. We're gonna add an identity column, which will mean it'll auto increment. And we're gonna specify number one. Now this first number's the ID it's gonna start at. So we're gonna start at ID one. And the second number, is how many we want it to increment by each time. So we want it to start at one and increment by one each time. Next off, we want, a pro we want it to be our primary key. Now, primary key specifies that it can only be single values in there. So you couldn't have two of the, of the same number because you could only have one single employee ID for the same reason I mentioned earlier that you, you wouldn't know who refers to who. Now let's look at null values and not null values. Every employee is gonna have a first name, so we wanna force that. So we want that to be not null, which means not empty. If it's null, it means we're allowing the value to be blank, but we don't want an employee without a first name. This column, however, we can leave that as is, because we don't mind if that's blank. Last name, once again, we want that to be not null and age, probably don't want that to be blank either. That's a great way to create a table. So let's create that. So let's have a look at our table. It's nice and empty. So that's, we can see within tables here, we've got our columns specifying it's a primary key, it specifies it's not null. We didn't specify in here, so it's null. Perfect. So let's look at some considerations when creating tables. Considerations, what are columns containing? As I mentioned earlier, age, we need to know what they're gonna contain so we know how to create them with what types. What data types are these columns going to contain? Is it a time field? Is it just names? Is it strings? Are they fractions? So like 3.5, would we need them to contain that sort of value? How large is each column going to get? The first name, we aren't going to see a first name over 32 characters, so 32 is a good size. If it's an address, we might need it to be 250 characters. We need to understand that before we create our table. What fields do we want to be unique? ID columns, 
employee ID columns, we want those to be unique, staff numbers, driving license numbers, these sort of things, we want these fields to be unique. And how big is the table going to be? We need to know the size of it to plan when creating tables. So let's look now at inserting these values into the TBL employee table. We insert into these two rows. As you can see, the ID column has auto incremented and it's auto populated. So when we use the identity keyword, there's no need to specify the ID. If that wasn't there, then that would need to be specified every time. Let's also look at inserting, let's take out the last name. Now what we've done here, last name is not null, which means we're forcing a value to go in. So we're not going to insert it in. SQL Server will correctly error. You cannot insert a null value into the last name because it's not null column. So we can force applications and we can force values into, the, into our tables how we create them. So now let's look at how to add a column to a table. What I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll back up, I'm going to drop the table altogether. Now I'm going to create it again like we did at the beginning but without our ID column. And if we refresh, we should see our tables. It hasn't got an ID column. Perfect. We should also see that it's completely blank because it's got nothing in there. Now let's add a column. Let's add alter table. Specify the table name. We're going to add, we don't need to say what we're going to add. SQL Server is going to assume it's a column. So we're going to add. ID and that's going to be not null. Oh, we need to specify what type of column it is. We want it to be an integer, don't we? So select from here and we can see our ID column is just here and if we refresh our columns list, there we have our ID column. Let's go one step further. Let's add a primary key to a table. See that's nice and easy. We once again use alter table. Specify our table name. We want to add a primary key. And we're going to specify our ID column. Now we can add any of these columns to be our primary key if we want. If we want to, we can add more than one column. This will fail, I think, we need to be in brackets. But in this case, we're just going to add our ID column. It's completed successfully. And if we refresh this, it should tell us our ID column is our primary key. So that's how you add a primary key to a table after it's been created. What happens if we want to drop a primary key? To do that, Primary keys are seen as constraints in SQL. Now it's much easier to highlight your primary key. We go down to keys here. We can see our primary key. We can script that and we can drop it. This is the name of our primary key here. So I can run that. And it will drop my primary key from there. Go back to this window, and if we wanted, if we want to know how to drop a column from a table, we can do TBO employee. Drop column. And then to specify ID. And that will drop the column from the table, which we can see here. So that concludes the lesson on how to create a table in SQL Server, how to insert rows into SQL Server, how to insert multiple rows.
and important, most importantly, this syntax here. We need to look at the identity values and how we want to auto increment our IDs and our primary keys and our null and not null values. This is what we need to focus on. We need to understand what the table is going to be used for before we start planning how it's going to be created. As I said, have a look below at the link to my website where you can get scripts for this or the code for this. And you can try it at home for free, just as, a, just as I have here.